model box art and how the paintings of these great artists impacted my own artwork over the years. Hello everyone, welcome to Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that we're gonna be uh, adding uh, new programming to the channel. Uh, we're, on Wednesdays, we're gonna be featuring uh, models and box art uh, and talk about the vintage modeling era. And on uh, every other Saturday, uh, we're gonna be featuring the new in-studio series of uh, live videos showing uh, rare, unique factory models from the 1950s and 1960s. So I'd like to thank all of you for watching and uh, for those of you who subscribe, we really appreciate having you on board. But today we're gonna be talking about working from the great masters. And what you see here is a master drawing from the Renaissance. Uh, however, this is my copy of a master's drawing from the Renaissance. It was a homework assignment uh, and during my first year of art school at Pratt Institute in New York. The class was form and structure. I really love this. It was a great way to learn where we would copy uh, literally line by line uh, and tone for tone uh, how these drawings were made to learn um, the, the secrets and the tricks and techniques of uh, uh, making uh, high quality artwork. But if you're into aviation, these are the masters that I was studying. And to uh, paraphrase a quote from the movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, who are these guys? Well, let's start with Mort Kunstler, who uh, was from New York and illustrated for Aurora. We had John Steele, uh, an amazing talent from Los Angeles who uh, illustrated Ravel and Aurora covers. We had the great Joe Catula, the elder statesman of uh, model box art, uh, based in uh, Pennsylvania. He worked for Piper Aircraft and then did a long series of uh, covers for Aurora. The great Dick Cashati, Ravel's first art director and cover artist uh, well through the 1950s. The amazing airbrush art of Ray Gadke for Lindbergh. And of course, the incomparable Jack Lenwood. There were other artists too. Uh, R.G. Smith from Douglas uh, had a big influence. I had a series of lithographs that uh, the company sent me uh, when I was about 12 and uh, I put them to good use uh, learning uh, how R.G. did it, um, or trying at least. Uh, Bob McCall illustrated the General Electric calendars showing the airplanes powered by GE engines. And uh, this, uh, this, this illustration had a very profound effect on me. I remember seeing it in middle school, about ninth grade and uh, so there was my version of uh, a 990 taking off, but uh, seeing an airplane with the gear retracting and uh, a great way to learn about light and shadow and even composition all came from the inspiration of these great uh, artists. Uh, Ren Wicks, who was uh, one of LA's top illustrators and uh, personal artist to Howard Hughes, uh, painted all the great TWA ads showing constellations and eventually the Boeing 707. And I remember looking at this artwork and saying, someday I'd really love to do something like that. So what I'm gonna show you now are six paintings that were influenced by vintage model box art. So here we go. The first uh, is a, uh, I had a commission for the Blackburn Beverly, big uh, English troop transport. And uh, I thought, well, let's see, I, how, how can I make this airplane look uh, elegant and graceful? And I thought, boy, this is a cover I could use. And so uh, I was inspired by the sky on uh, Dick Gashadi's Eastern uh, Super G constellation. But let me, let me show you how this is done. The, uh, uh, this artwork was all painted in designer gouache, which is uh, a water-based uh, opaque medium, a beautiful uh, method of painting. And uh, the backgrounds were always put in first. So the airplane shape would be drawn in. Uh, and then uh, we'd use what we call a frisket, which is a low tack uh, precision uh, uh, masking template uh, that you uh, cut out with an X-Acto blade. And uh, the background is then painted around that. So the, the frisket prevents the water from uh, reaching the part of the uh, board that the uh, airplane's gonna be on. So this technique is called wet into wet. The illustration board is uh, wet with a, a damp sponge and then the uh, paint is applied. And as you see here, the edges just bleed uh, into each other and create this beautiful uh, diaphanous uh, cloud effect. 
And I thought, boy, this is, this is really going to work well for my Beverly. And then what happens is after the background is dry, then the airplane is painted in. Of course, the lettering is added and you've got your cover. But this was my version. And there's the Beverly uh, flying high over the uh, countryside in Yorkshire. Uh, and uh, there's my wet into wet sky. And you can see how that worked with the uh, coloration of the airplane. Next, uh, I had an Air Force art assignment. I spent nine hours in a B-52H out of uh, Fairchild Air Force Base in uh, Washington. And the highlight of that uh, trip was a uh, descent and uh, on the deck uh, pass over the Colorado River. It was called the River Run. And uh, there were two airplanes in our formation and we uh, literally were on the deck and raced along the Colorado River on an approach to an electronic target for a training exercise. And so I thought, well, here's one of my favorites. This is the great Jack Lenwood uh, C-130 at Van Nuys Airport with the yellow and lime green sky. And you notice that the ground equipment, which is actually yellow in, uh, in uh, reality, uh, is painted orange in this uh, cover because, uh, well, <laughs> orange is the complementary color to green. So I thought, okay, I'll use a yellow and green sky with a dash of orange. And I came up with this. So here's our, our airplane uh, racing along. It's very stylized, but it was a high key, uh, high impact uh, painting for the art program. And you see the Seattle Seahawk logo up there. And that was the squadron emblem out of uh, Fairchild. Next, I had a series of paintings for Airbus Industry of North America uh, based at Dulles Airport in Virginia. And uh, the assignment was to do a united uh, Airbus A319 taking off out of San Francisco, showing the maintenance base in the background. And I thought, hmm, a French built twin jet airliner taking off uh, with a dramatic sky doesn't get any better than this. And you've seen this in some of my other uh, episodes where I talk about uh, uh, Jack Lenwood uh, creating his magic with all these incredible uh, uh, airplanes. So uh, I thought, all right, a pink and purple sky and the airplane taken to the air. Um, and I had already actually done a version of this uh, in my Prismacolor era uh, as a teenager, I uh, created a United uh, Caravel. So uh, how do we apply that to the assignment? Well, we have a United A319 taking off out of San Francisco with the maintenance base in the background. And by the way, you've heard me mention Machat's law, which is uh, the, um, the fact that uh, airplanes are inconsistent in their markings over time. So I have a question for you. Is United Airlines two words like on the jet or three words like on the hangar? Right. Uh, I had an assignment to do a B-58 Hustler taking off uh, in a dark stormy sky. And I thought, well, <laughs> thank you, Joe Catula. Uh, here we have the two F-105s taking off from what I call Anywhere Air Force Base USA. And I thought uh, it with the burner lit and creating all sorts of uh, amazing lighting. And I thought, well, I can, I can do something like that. And so here was a, uh, what is called an oil painting comp, just a rough color sketch to illustrate a, a concept of the B-58 taking off from an airbase uh, in Burner. Uh, another Air Force assignment had me uh, depict the Joint Strike Fighter program. And uh, specifically, I was to create a painting of the first air refueling of the Lockheed Martin X-35 Joint Strike Fighter Demonstrator, which you see here on the boom of the KC-135 tanker. And we were chasing in an F-16. That's a Lockheed photographer in the airplane uh, at the top. And uh, we had this view of the tanker for a bit. And I thought, you know, I've seen this somewhere. Where did I see a view like this? Oh, that's right. Ravel's KC-135 Strato tanker. I said, well, this is great. I'm going to show the JSF on the boom and looking up at the airplane, kind of like that. Worked out pretty cool. And finally, uh, I had an assignment to depict Colonel Clyde East flying a photo recon McDonnell RF uh, 101C Voodoo over the uh, Havana Harbor during the Cuban Missile Crisis in October of 1962. And I thought, well, I'm going to show the airplane coming towards you and have a, a light horizon kind of backlit with a soft uh, green, green blue color in the background, kind of like this. And that was uh, my depiction of uh, Colonel East uh, 
And if you ever saw the famous uh, photo of the shadow on the dock with the freighter with the Russian missiles on it, that was uh, Clyde's airplane. And so here's my depiction of that racing along uh, at uh, near supersonic speed over Havana Harbor. And uh, just to end on a, on a fun note, I thought, what if we reverse the process? We'll take in a, a painting that I've done and make that into a cover. Uh, so this was uh, the F-107, North American's uh, Mach 2 jet in the 50s. Uh, and this was done for the NASA documentary art program. Uh, and I thought, well, what would this look like as a Ravel kit? It would look something like that. F-107A, operating landing gear, Pratt & Whitney J-75, and scaled from official blueprints. A lot of fun. So there you have it, a look at uh, how the uh, amazing artwork of the 50s and 60s impacted my own paintings over the years. And thank you so much for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. I would like to say special thanks to all the great artists of the vintage model era for the inspirational artwork that affected an entire generation. Uh, we will always be grateful. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, until next time, take care.